Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. The hack squat. It is loved, it is hated. People do it right, people do it wrong. Let's try to focus on how not to do it wrong and figure out how to do it right with these common tips, tricks, and fixes. Remember the purpose of the hack squat is to hypertrophy your quads. So let's get right into it. Common mistake number one with the hack squat is folks not going deep enough. Going super deep on the hack squat allows your quads to be exposed to a crazy amount of nearly isolated tension. They are super, super, very much the limiting factor. If you start cutting depth, then you can do more reps, but for what? In addition to that, cutting depth, sometimes on hack squats, put your knees in a really interesting position, which is not the best. So a lot of times, folks will put a lot of weight in there because you know the whole point of the hack squat is to impress people who don't give a shit with how much weight you're lifting, and they'll set up a pretty good setup, and all of a sudden, you know, they'll come down, and they'll notice, okay, here it's getting really tough, uh, better come up. And then, okay, I could go down, but there's no way I'm coming up if I go deeper, so I'm not gonna do that. Put less weight on the bar, a lot of times that's what has to be done, Make sure your feet is set in and expose yourself to maximum tension by going all the way down until you can literally sit on your calves as long as your heels are touching the ground. You are, as the kids say, Gucci. This is the way to do a proper hack squat all the way down. Now, you may have every very good intention of going deep enough, but when you go low, what ends up happening is the machine actually hits the bottoms and it stops you maybe right here or maybe right here. Here's a solution to that problem. As you can see, walk with me for a second. What you can do is put mats onto the hack squat just like these. Now, for my short ass, I need three mats to make this machine work and actually go to full depth. If you don't have mats like this at your gym, it can be tough. Use the machine for as much range of motion as it gives you. But if you do have mats like this, layer enough of them, make sure they're nice and solid. Don't go killing yourself now. And then you'll test it out. Remember that as the weights get heavier, your body compresses more. You may need to add in another layer of mats you didn't know you had to when you just did the warmups. For me, it takes three mats. For you, who knows? If you're of an adult height, unlike myself, I never grew taller than a child. If you're an adult height, you may not need this, but especially if you're female, unfortunately, many machines are just not designed for females with a shorter stature. You may need a couple of these. After you get them, it's gonna make a world of difference. Next mistake, sometimes people try to go for extra credit and they go super, super deep. And what ends up happening is they actually get into a position which is not super safe and doesn't produce a ton of force. So a lot of times people wanna get all the way down what they end up doing is they round their back at the bottom. Sometimes their heels come up and a bunch of other stuff. You only want to go as deep as you can with a nice straight lower back and your heel still on the ground. This down here is extra credit. Nobody needs you. Lose a ton of tension through all of your muscles. Your injury risk goes up a little bit, but fundamentally you're just not getting as good enough of a workout for your quads. So go deep, but not so deep that your back rounds, your pelvis tilts, and your heels come off the ground. Next mistake is not having a standardized range of motion. Now, even if you're trying to do a full range of motion, what ends up happening is sometimes, make sure I get my feet right here, sometimes you go down pretty quick and you sort of hit your calves and you come back up. Sometimes you go down a little slower and you sink in that extra little bit and you come back up. So it ends up being very close to standard, but not quite, and it can throw off your rep count your, your, and how much overload you're producing week to week to week. So if you did 20 reps with 240 pounds last week, and you do 21 reps this time, or you go from 240 to 245, maybe you cut more of your reps a little high this week and actually didn't outperform yourself. It's tough to know if you're keeping track of your maximum recovery volume via performance if you're always doing a little bit different. So my recommendation is twofold. Uh, a good recommendation is when you go down, gently slow down and then come all the way back up. Because when you slow down and almost stop, you usually get almost the same depth. Another one, your call, which one you do, and you can actually use both for variation, one of these for some number of mesocycles, another for the other, is to come all the way down to a complete stop and come all the way back up. Now, you don't need to be sitting for hours down there, but a full stop for a second can standardize every single repetition and have you doing these no problem the same way over and over. Great for stimulus, great for standardization, great for tracking. Next mistake, we have a combo of feet too close to the platform and feet too far away from the platform. 
Or if you're really crazy, both at the same time. I'm just kidding. All right. So the first one, pretty rare, because in this one, if you have your feet too close, you usually can't produce a lot of force, which means you can't put a lot of weight on the bar. So most people don't even bother with this one. But sometimes, you know, if you're diligent and you just want to do a good job, you may end up putting your feet really close to the platform. Here's what happens. First of all, it feels really, really nasty in your quad tendons sometimes, but some people are resilient and or like myself, just bullheaded and will just do it anyway. The real bad stuff happens when you get low enough, it turns out that you can't keep your heels down. This radically drops a ton of force production. And now you're using so little weight and getting so little tension through your quads, you're not growing them as much as you could be. The solution to this, of course, is what you do is you put your feet up a little bit to where now you go all the way down, your heels are stable, producing a lot of force and everything's fixed. You can take that fix too far, and many people do, and put your feet up really, really high. What ends up happening then is at the bottom, notice my lower back is coming off the seat, it's rounding, and then sometimes when they come up, this happens to where they hit into the bar. Not so great for injury reasons for the lower back, also, now you're using muscles like your glutes more that aren't really supposed to be used a ton. You're turning the hack squat more into a regular squat inside of a machine. You want that happy middle ground. Notice something. I don't know if you can see this on the camera. Hopefully you can. We actually have this hack squat marked with a little bit of chalk right there, these little white notches to make sure that we know where in reference our feet are. And all of us who train on this thing here at... Um, at Sat Strength uh, Lions Den Gym, we actually know exactly, roughly, exactly roughly, you guys like that, uh, where our feet go in relation to these so we know where we're good to make sure that every squat is the same every time we come in for a session, we have this really good position where we're going low enough, our heels are still touching and we're producing tons of force as opposed to going too high and rounding the crap out of your back or too shallow and losing tension through your quads by having to get onto your toes. Sometimes, even with your best intentions, you end up coming up on your toes as you hack squat way, way, way too much. Well, actually, any is really bad. You always wanna have the force centered in the middle of your foot, and if anything, closer to your heel. If you can't do that, we have at least two things you can try, other than, as already explained, moving your feet up or down on the platform. Because it could be one of these things where if you move your feet up enough for your heels to touch, then your lower back starts rounding. That's no bueno. So we have two potential fixes. One, as you see me now, have a weightlifting shoe. They're amazing. If you are a bodybuilder or someone who trains for hypertrophy, you've never done weightlifting or powerlifting or anything like that, you don't know about weightlifting shoes, they will turn your quad training upside down in the best possible way. Everything will come from your quads. The leverage will feel perfect. They're super tight. Nothing moves around. It's awesome. That extra heel in there, make sure that when you go super deep, you're still on your heels. It's amazing. Highly, highly recommend investing in a weightlifting shoe if you don't already have one. Now, the alternative thing to do if you don't have a weightlifting shoe is sometimes, and this hack squat is not one of them, there'll be a notch or a lever here right on this part where you can actually move the platform up and down a little bit. A lot of times tilting the platform further away from you lets you sit more on your heels and less on your toes and can actually fix the problem. It's like a sort of built-in weightlifting shoe. The downside is if you tilt it too far, you start to slip and there's a ton of tension in your knees because there's tons of shearing force. So make sure you don't just push the platform all the way down, play around with it a little bit, but push it down a little bit so that you can get a really good perch on your heels and do the best job possible safely, producing tons of force for your quads. The next mistake isn't so much a mistake, it's a little bit of dogma of people wondering where they should put their feet as far as width. Should I put my feet out super far? Should I have my feet super close? Here's the deal. There are literally zero correct answers here, only a guidance. And the guidance is this. What produces the most tension in your quads while not being limited by other muscles like adductors and glutes and also feeling pretty good on your knees, hips, and all the other joints involved? So here's the deal. If you really feel with a wide stance, by the way, this also concerns which way to point the feet. Wide stance, feet pointed out, you feel an awesome amount of tension and stretch in the quads. They really are the limiting factor for you. Amazing, no pain in the knees, no weirdness. Your hips are aligned, your back's not rounded, and that's how you like the hack squat? Have at it. On the other hand, if that feels weird as shit and you like to keep your feet really close, pointed completely forward, and go all the way down, and that's how you get a ton of tension, in your quads and everything else feels great, 
that's absolutely on you. It's super fine to do it. Anything in between is good. My training partner, Charlie, actually has his feet super close with his toes pointed super far out. It's like a duck in water. There are no hard rules here. We'll do whatever is hitting your quads hard, making sure they're the limiting factor. So for example, if you're doing this wide stance because it feels pretty good on your quads and your joints are good and your knees are good, and after, you know, when you get closer to failure, you're like, Ugh! it's like my quads are fine, but I know like in my adductors, the muscles bringing the knees in, they're the ones getting really, really tired, really fatigued and starting to cramp. Maybe it's not the best because your adductors will get most of the training. Your quads will themselves never approach failure. Not exactly a quad exercise anymore. Unless you're using hack squats to train your adductors, which is cool, even though there's 50 other exercises for them, not the best idea. So even if bringing in your stance doesn't quite let you lift as much weight and maybe doesn't feel as good for your joints. It still feels fine. If your quads are really the limiting factor now, that's probably the better way to go. Use those as your guides. And also last thing, you can do them all for a few weeks at a time. You can do wide if that feels good. And then a few weeks at a time or several mesocycles at a time, you can do narrow and anything in between. Hey, you can even do this. On one day of the week, let's say you train hack squats twice a week, which is totally fine. You can go heavy with a wide stance. And then another day of the week, you can go light, possibly after heavy squats or something, with a closer stance, feet pointed more in to really, really isolate the quads more. Again, no right answers here. Just do the right thing to your joints and to your muscles. All right, next mistake, super common is to not have a controlled eccentric and to rush it and to dive bomb it. Here's the thing. When you got a set of 15 or 20 hack squats ahead of you, it's really tempting to be like, you know what? This hurts. So I'm gonna get these reps done as fast as I can. So you go down real quick and then uh, you come up and whoop, you drop in real quick and uh, you come up. Cool thing is you get to write 15 or 20 or whatever number of reps on your worksheet. Sweet, you're the man, nobody gives a shit. The not cool thing is that you missed a ton of hypertrophic stimulus milking out the eccentric phase, which is important for growth. It's not like a special, more important phase, but concentric, eccentric, and isometric are all important for growth, so you don't wanna miss out. Here's the deal. This does not mean that you need to do one of these bullshit like 18 second eccentrics where you're like, ooh, I wonder what I'm doing later. Oh, look, I finished her up, time to come back up. That can needlessly reduce force production. It's a fine way to train, but not the best. Any eccentric phase that's controlled at all is good. So I would recommend something like two seconds on the way down, all the way up to five seconds if you'd like, but pick a standard. So for the next two or three mesocycles, two seconds on the way down, and then as fast as you can come up on the way up. So maybe look something like this. Control and up. Control and feel your quads and up. And you can do all the way up to five seconds too. So you're gonna control and then come up and then control just the same way, same set and come up. Both are cool and anything is cool in between. Just don't dive bomb them and don't take forever to take load off the bar. Locking out. Is it fine or is it gonna kill you? What should your reps look like? Should you go down? and then come up just shy of lockout, and then come down, and then come up? Or when you come up, should you go and lock your knees? Here's the thing. You're not that lady from the crazy ass leg press video. If you don't throw up or pass out from really disturbing things, YouTube the shit out of that video, leg press accident lockout lady. There's plenty of those floating around. It's super disturbing, this is where this lady is incredibly, incredibly flexible, probably not very strong. She hyper extends her knees and they bend all the way back. I know, super, super messed up. And it's a huge disaster. You're not that lady. The human joint in almost every case is designed to lock out under load. Okay, that, that, this is totally fine. Unless you have way too much weight in the bar, you have no business of doing or you slam purposefully and try to hyper extend your knees, but you're not doing that. Almost all people with any semblance of athleticism, as they come up, they reduce the velocity and then lock. They're not like jumping into the shit. So if you don't do crazy, crazy, purposeful, super powerful lockouts, which are pointless, you're totally fine locking out. If you prefer to do a few reps, maybe eight to 10, 
almost to lockout to keep the tension on the muscle and build up a ton of metabolites. And then after you've done, let's say eight reps and you're almost at failure, you can lock out, breathe two or three breaths, and then do another set like that. That's totally fine. As long as you standardize the number of rest breaks you take, you're like, okay, for the next mental cycle, I'm taking two breathing breaks of three seconds each in every single set of hack squats. That way you can really track your performance because you can always do a couple more reps if you breathe for a while. As long as you're doing that, you can do that method, or you can lock out every single rep, or you can do each one of your sets to almost lock out. And when you can't do it anymore, when you lock out once, you rack the weight. It's your call. If you don't like to lock out, no big deal. If you're locking out, it's totally fine. And over time, it is not unsafe for your joints to lock out. This is a huge myth that needs to die. Last mistake and last tip for hack squats before we sign off of this, going too heavy or going too light. There's really no such thing as too heavy for light. The hack squat's an incredible machine. You can do anywhere from sets of five to sets of 30, no problem. Here's the thing though. Sets of five to 10, a lot of times because the hack squat so much biases force into the direction of your knees away from your hips, it can leave your knees and quad tendons feeling a little bit not so great, especially after multiple weeks of training. For most people, it'll be fine, may not be worth the risk, especially since you're free squatting and maybe Smith machine squatting is totally awesome to do in the five to 10 rep range. So it's not that it's bad, you might just not need to do it. On the other hand, hack squats can do sets of 20 to 30 reps, totally fine, but you've got leg extensions, you have leg presses, you have lunges, all of which have less axial load pressing down in your spine, thus less systemic fatigue to do with those super high rep sets. So my best recommendation to you is most of the time use hack squats between sets of 10 and sets of 20. It's a big range. Within that range, find what works best for you. And hey, don't be afraid to use both parts of the range. So earlier in the week, you can do sets of like 12 reps or so. And later in the week, you do sets of like 18 reps or so. Gets you an awesome high tension stimulus in the first part of the week, an awesome metabolite stimulus in the second. Everything's super good. And fundamentally, if you feel like your quads are the limiting factor, and if you don't have any joint pain and you're systemically not limited, any rep range for hack squats is totally fine. Folks, thank you so much for tuning into this hack squat video. I wish I had more tips and tricks here, but it's a really very straightforward exercise. Do it ease into it because it can make you sore as hell. It's going to build you enormous quads. If you do it right, you do it over the long term and you get stronger slowly. Don't be tempted to throw tons of hundreds on there and do a shitty job. Take your time to get stronger. For a long time, I was only hack squatting in the 300s and my quads are already really big. Sort of embarrassing, you could say. Now I'm hack squatting close to 600 pounds. My quads have grown for sure, but I did it right the entire time. I didn't have to get hurt a bunch or caught up in my ego. If you have any questions, shoot them into the comments. If you have any suggestions for other machines or other exercises we can demo and talk about, shoot them in the comments as well. And folks, if you want to answer some questions and help us out, if you know what you're talking about, by all means, help out your fellow YouTubers. Like, subscribe, share, whatever the fuck YouTube people do. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Catch you next time. Wow. Oh. Did you hear that? Fuck. It was very silent. It was like, it was like bubbly and gurgly. Things happened in my asshole that I'm not proud of.